What's up YouTube? This is Python Bro. Uh, this will be my first video and hopefully a, a long list of videos of uh, cool things to do with Python, mostly probably Py, th uh, Py game. Uh, today we're going to talk about using an Xbox 360 controller uh, and, and how to get input from it using Py game, using the joystick, uh, the joystick objects that are in that library. Uh, m we're going to be using this script. Uh, it's an SDL event echoer. Uh, I've edited it a little bit, um, but uh, you can get this script from uh, this guy, Nearpins, or I don't know how to, Nearpins, I'm sorry if I don't understand like some reference that that's to, but uh, I don't know how to say it. <laughs> but I'll include a link to uh, to both of these pages. This page is, is for the script that you saw. Uh, basically, it's going to gather all the events that are happening in Pygame and print what it is to the interpreter so that you can map out your buttons. Uh, like I said, I'm going to show you how to do it with an Xbox 360 controller. Uh, I've got a wireless controller hooked up into my computer. Uh, this other page, is he's already done this and has the actual buttons for the controller. Um, so if you want to do it with an Xbox 360 controller, which you probably do, you can just do that. But uh, it's useful to know how this works. Let's go over to the script. Um, if you're not familiar with Pygame, you're probably looking at the wrong video. <laughs> uh, there's nothing super complex I'm doing here with Pygame, but uh, it's just some simple things that happen in most every Pygame program that you should know about. Uh, if you're not familiar, I'll just go through it real quick. Basically, you're gonna you're gonna make a window, uh, display dot set mode. These are your dimensions of your window. You're gonna set a caption. This is that's what appears up here at the top of the screen. Uh, I'm gonna blit a background to our screen and I'll show you what I'm gonna do with that when we go down to what we do with the joystick. Uh, just a white background for right now. Um, so what he does in his script is he makes this list of joysticks. Uh, it's an empty list. Uh, I got my clock object and my uh, my loop bool. Lots of people do done equals uh, false and then while not done they'll go through their loop. Uh, I don't know, I was just trained to to make it a true bool. It doesn't matter as long as you have the, the logic right. Um, then what he does is uh, for the a range, the range of uh, joysticks you have connected to your computer, you're going to go through and, and add all those or create those objects. Uh, this command, joystick.getCount, it counts how many joysticks are connected to your computer. Um, when you uh, initialize this object, which is what he does next, he basically initializes, creates a excuse me, it creates this joystick object and then initializes it excuse me and adds it to this list up here and when that happens the computer is going to recognize the name that uh, the joystick has which we'll see when uh, uh, when this script is or when this line is executed whenever when this is run, this for loop is run and a joystick is recognized and it's added to this list uh, it's going to print to the interpreter that it's been detected and it's going to tell you the name. Dot get name uh, is the name. Uh, so let's go down to our main loop. Like I said, his, his script is for everything. It's for keyboard and for mouse presses and, and mouse motion. Um, uh, these first two uh, conditionals are for uh, checking to see if you exit. If you press escape, which is this line right here, if you press a key and that key is escape, you're going to exit you're going to exit your loop, which will exit your program. Uh, and if you press the big red X up here, you'll exit. Uh, but the interesting stuff is down here. Uh, like I said, he's he's checking for keys. If you're pressing a key down, it'll tell you what key it is. And if you let go of it, it'll tell you what key. Um, I commented out this, uh, this statement right here because, uh, and you don't have to, but basically any motion on your window is going to print this statement and because I'm running this, you know, it's supposed to be running 60 times per second, it's going to print that a lot. So I just commented that out because um, I don't need to know that. Uh, but you might for your program. Then uh, he checks to see if you press a, the mouse button down, mouse button up. This is the, the good stuff down here. Uh, basically, joysticks in Pygame, they have, I think, three different parts to them. They have axes, buttons, and hats. Uh, and that's defined by the controller. Uh, and, and that's what we're gonna. That's what we're using this program for is to get which things are axes, which things are buttons, what's their name. Uh, so each time we press or move an axis or a button uh, or a hat, a hat is usually uh, a analog. I mean a D-pad, 
a joystick is an axis. And on the Xbox 360 controller, the triggers on the back are considered axes. They're one-way axes. And then if we press a button, it's gonna uh, it's gonna check for it. What I put in here, this is not this is my code. This isn't from his. Uh, I basically just said uh, for button zero, which is A on the Xbox 360 controller, uh, fill the screen with red. If I press B, fill it with blue. And then when I let go, this is for when I press it down. This is for when I let go of it. Put it back to white. And then uh, I blew the background to the screen and then I uh, update the screen. So let's run this and see what we got. Let's put this over here. You can see that it's detected our controller. Um, press A, it'll turn red. You, you see all these axes, that's because when you press something it kind of shakes the controller uh, and it recognizes that uh, when those axes move. So I let go of A and it turns white again. Press B, it goes blue. Let go, it goes white again. You know, I'm moving the axis around, moving the other one, this is the left stick, 0 and 1 is the left stick, 3 and 4 is the right stick, uh, button 5 is the right button, uh, right bumper, button 4 is the left bumper, uh, if I press either of the triggers, they're axes 2, um, I'll get to that in a second, but yeah, you got start button, select button, or back button on the Xbox controller, Y, X. And these are these are all mapped out on on the website. Um, you may be wondering if I press the right trigger trigger, it's axis two, and if I press the left left trigger, it's axis two. Uh, if you're using a Windows machine, um, you're not going to be able to use the triggers unless you want them both to do the same thing. Uh, because uh, he describes it down here, someone asked for some reason both triggers are indicated as axis two. Do you have any idea why that would happen? Uh, basically, what it is is that the the driver that SDL uses on Windows direct input recognizes both, excuse me, both triggers as axis 2. Um, and that's just something with SDL, that's nothing that I can change. Um, but if you're using a Linux machine, which I usually use, but mine's down right now, uh, then they should be separated into axis 2 and axis 5. Um, so yeah, that's the SDL event echoer. If you have any questions, let me know. Last thing I'll say, uh, is that you have to for this for this script? There's, I'm sure there's a way around it. I don't know, but uh, if you want to check for a joystick, the joystick has to be already connected. So, like for the uh, 360 controller, I have to already have linked it up to wirelessly to the computer. It has to be on. You can't run the script and then turn it on and it will recognize it. It won't recognize it. It has to be on already. That's it. I hope you guys liked it. I hope it's helpful. If there's any questions, let me know.